Welcome, Pirate Nation, to Pirates Weekly this week. A uh, little bit of a different change up here. Uh, our co-host, Lever Ball, was unable to join us this week. Uh, joining us as a guest this week is uh, the Louisville Extreme play-by-play -play broadcaster, Chris Labar. Uh, Chris, I'm going to get more into uh, the rest of your background, but uh, why don't we start with the Extreme? Uh, the Extreme are entering their first season in the IFL, and they're led by head coach Mark Stout. So, Chris, uh, if I were to ask you, yeah. how how does Mark Stout uh, go into – I mean, he has plenty of experience before the Extreme coaching, so how does he go into this year? Well, I think the slate is completely clean. And just like for you guys, first game in IFL history for both franchises, it's, it's a completely new slate. Uh, we're all uh, hopefully beyond COVID, so there's all that moving as well. But uh, it's just an awesome opportunity. I think I can't speak for Coach. I know they're right now in the process of assimilating the roster, but I think he's very excited about this opportunity. Yeah, and, you know, the the extreme entering their first season, they have a, a handful of players signed. But in your opinion, through some of your research, uh, is there one player that you could pinpoint as maybe a player for – you know, Pirates fans or IFL fans to watch out for this season? Well, Rodney Nadd is, is a proven commodity in, in uh, indoor and arena leagues. He's a former University of Louisville player, graduated there in 11, and he's had a lengthy career. And uh, I mean, he's in his early 30s, but he's still good to go. I know they're very extreme faithful, very excited to bring him on board. And speaking of uh, University of Louisville, uh, the team general manager, uh, excuse, it might be general manager or president, Chris Redman. Uh, he also went to the University of Louisville. He was a uh, former NFL draft pick. He was actually uh, my co-host, Leverett, who's not able to be here today. We've been joking the entire offseason when we talk about the extreme, how he was selected ahead of Tom Brady in the famous uh, 2000 NFL draft. So regardless of that, uh, have you met Chris? And, uh, you know, what, how do you feel uh, – you know, what's his mindset heading into the season? Well, I know Chris very well. His his dad, Bob Redmond, coached him at Louisville Mail High School. And Bob actually uh, was a former offensive lineman uh, for Coach Corso back in the day at the University of Louisville. And Bob will be doing the games with me on TV. So that know that family very well. Uh, Chris is the team president, and uh, he has such a wonderful reputation in the city of Louisville. And for him to be affiliated with this franchise, I really believes, uh, believe brings a lot of credibility. He's, he's a top-notch guy. And uh, yes, he was selected above Brady, but he had a, a pretty solid NFL career in his own right. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I believe it went over 10 years, uh, a service, serviceable uh, quarterback in the NFL, uh, played for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, off, you know, just thinking off the cusp here, Chris, I'm not sure if you knew this, but a Pirates player actually uh, went to the University of Louisville, uh, Chucky Williams. Does that name ring a bell, a defensive back? It doesn't. What was the time era there? Uh, I believe he graduated uh, about five years ago or so, maybe 2016, 2017, around that time frame. Okay. Um, but yeah, he's been he's entering his second season with the Pirates. He was named second team All NAL uh, last year. So um, you know he he's a he's a good player for us. Uh, moving on, uh, staying in Louisville though, Chris. Um, the Extreme recently announced uh, a move, a uh, change in arenas. They're moving to the KFC Yum Center. And, uh, you know, when I first saw that, I, you know, I was really excited because I, I know that I actually drove by that uh, arena one time. I was traveling across the country, and uh, yeah, I, I, I believe that's where the Louisville men's basketball team plays. And I remember watching them all those years with Rick Pitino. So, uh, you know, how, how do you feel about the move? It's, uh, it's outstanding. And uh, University of Louisville, men and women both play there. And of course, the men have a wonderful program, but, but so do the women. And for the extreme to be able to play there, it, it's outstanding. Back in the day when they were part of the CIFL, they played at uh, Broadbent Arena, which is so, sort of an older antiquated facility. But um, the Yum Center was actually constructed uh, back in the day, almost modeling an NBA arena mindset. It's a wonderful facility, and I, I can't compare, having not been to other arenas in the IFL, can't really compare, but I would have to say Yum is certainly in the top tier, no doubt. Well, uh, excited for the Pirates to uh, head out there. I mean, Chris Labar, the play-by-play -play broadcaster for the Louisville Extreme, uh, the Pirates, the first game, we're heading to you. We're heading to Louisville uh, you know, what should the Pirates players expect when they uh, touch down in Louisville? What kind of a place is it? Well, it's uh, it's an outstanding facility, and it's really the beginning of all of the hoopla in Louisville. The Kentucky Derby is the week after. So when you guys come in, are you coming in the day before, I presume? I believe so. 
So you'll be pretty much in the in the throes of all the Derby Festival events, which uh, the Kentucky Derby for all you folks there, uh, if you've never been, it's uh, unquestionably one of the, the finest events in uh, not only sport, but, but pop culture. Uh, but then, you know, Churchill Downs is close by, the University of Louisville is close by, and Louisville has grown exponentially uh, over the years. It's, uh, it's, you know, certainly parts of a modern trend, a younger demographic in a large uh, conglomerate there of Louisville. So uh, it's, it's a great, vibrant city, and I know the extreme, they're elated to be able to, you know, kind of wipe the slate clean, like we talked about, just a new opportunity. It's a great, fulfilling league that both of our franchises are involved with, and it's, uh, it's just really exciting times. As I mentioned, the Pirates in the Extreme will be playing four times this season. The second matchup will come in early June in Worcester uh, as the Extreme will head on the road to Worcester. Uh, Chris, the Extreme, uh, first year entering the IFL. Um, from, your, from what you've gathered, what are the team's expectations for this season? Well, that's a great question. I know they're in the process of really just starting practice and, and uh, having tryouts. So the tryouts are open to the public, open to the community. Uh, I think they've got a couple of good staples. We talked about Rodney Nant to maybe build around, uh, but Coach Stout, now he's a proven commodity. He's uh, incredibly experienced in this environment, in this indoor league. And I think that uh, this is a program that's going to continue to get better, just like with most franchises as the season continues. One of the great uh, focal points about this franchise is that being in Louisville, it's a college athletics hotbed. You've got the University of Louisville in 70 miles west. You've got the University of Kentucky. And then you have Indiana University in an hour and a half or so north of downtown Louisville. And those three universities um, have really spawned off outstanding athletes. And I, I can't speak for the extreme franchise. I, they hire me to do their games. I don't work in the front office, but I really think their personnel initiative is to attract fans by going after former players with name recognition amongst those three universities. It, it makes a lot of sense. So I think they're going to have a homegrown type flavor. Yeah, the uh, both the University of Louisville football program, which we are talking about, a little bit earlier. I mean, we forgot to leave out Lamar Jackson, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, and, and the University of Kentucky uh, football team also on the rise. Uh, a former top 10 pick a couple of years ago, Josh Allen, uh, comes to mind. Uh, Benny Snell, the running back, comes to mind. So, um, yeah, it, it is, uh, it, it's kind of uh, flying under the radar, I would say, uh, in, in terms of a, a sports hotbed uh, compared to other states. It, it really is. And, uh, you know, it all starts at a youthful age there in the city of Louisville in the state of Kentucky. But uh, the extreme, they're, they're positioned in a very good geographic area to, to pull from um, players with very talented backgrounds. So I, I think that's going to be their focal point, not only from a ticket sale standpoint, but from a competitive nature as well. So, Chris, last question um, about the extreme, and then we'll move on to uh, some more, more of your background as a broadcaster. Um, other than playing the Pirates four times, uh, have you had a look at their schedule yet? Uh, what do you feel about other matchups uh, that lay ahead? Well, a couple of buys early, and I think that can be good and bad. I think as the season moves along, that's going to be a positive. Uh, but certainly, you know, there's going to be the dog days of summer where you've got eight, ten games in succession without a buy. So I think that may be an issue as the season uh, wears down. But I, I think – Again, I can't speak for the extreme too specifically, but I think they're going to evaluate themselves on the growth, not only on the field this season, but from the from the community as well. I think this is a long term plan. This is where they want to be. This is an outstanding league that both of our franchises are part of. So I think this is a long haul process and they just want, you know, one day at a time, as they say. But I think that's their focal point. I really like the I really like the one day at a time saying and yeah, you're mentioning how the, this league is expanding, uh, you know, first with Louisville, you know, in, in it's not the Midwest, but it's kind of like heading, heading east toward the Atlantic Ocean and then the Pirates on the Atlantic Ocean. Next year, the Columbus Wild Dogs are coming to the IFL in Ohio. I believe Ohio is right next to Kentucky, isn't it? Yes, yes. Not too far, right above. Yeah, the next state. Yeah, yeah I mean, we got you so coming, coming east. So, oh, okay. uh, Chris Labar, uh, broadcaster for the Louisville Extreme. I want to get more into your, your background. And uh, the first thing that pops out is that you are the CEO and founder of Glycod. Uh, can you explain what Glycod is and, and how that came about? 
Well, that's, that's a great question. It's uh, basically, it's a media company and we do a ton with high school sports, uh, you know, calling games for so many years. Uh, I, my love is with high schools and ex excited for the extreme and some other opportunities that, I, that I've had and I'm having, but high school is so pure and I love, love working with those coaches and athletic directors. So Glycod, we really try to uh, speak positively through positive broadcast, both video and audio of local high school athletics and, um, you know, working hard with the community through sponsorship sales and social media is huge as well. But that's uh, that's the focal point. What's your uh, what's your favorite high school sport to call um, for Glycod? Oh, I think it changes by the season. I uh, love football, of course. But, uh, you know, yesterday we wrapped up uh, high school basketball here in the state. And uh, Kentucky is one of the few states where you have just one champion. There's no classification uh, for basketball, at least as it applies to the, quote, state tournament. And, uh, you know, we had a girls game yesterday and, and the team that we had followed all season, number one in the state the entire season and, uh, and lost in the, in the semifinal yesterday. And those girls were just devastated. And uh, it wasn't my favorite game to call, but it was clearly one of the more emotional ones that I've been a part of, for sure. It kind of reminds me of what just happened in March Madness, how Gonzaga, some of the, some of the fans were, including me. I mean, I don't really cover, uh, you know, I was, I, I was actually listening to a Chris Sims, the quarterback who covers the NFL. Um, he was explaining how, you know, he's not in front of the TV every Saturday. He's focused uh, for college football. He's focused on, you know, the NFL during the season, but uh, once like the, the off season comes around or the NFL draft, uh, he's focused on the college football of eval evaluating those players. It, it's similar to me about how I don't watch any college basketball throughout the entire season. And then March Madness comes around and I, I kind of find a team and Gonzaga it was just amazing watching them play uh, and, and then to, to watch them lose in the final game. Uh, did you catch the March Madness at all? Watched a little bit of it this year. Uh, it just for me personally, just wasn't the same with it, without the fan element. And, uh, you know, we spoke recently about the three major universities here in this area. None of the three made it in the NCAA tournament, which is just utter blasphemy <laughs> in this area. So, no, I didn't watch it a lot. But and I think as you'll find as you continue in this business more, Oliver, I think you'll root for people more than teams. And I don't know Coach Few all that well at all. But I felt like he'd paid his due and the same for Coach Drew as well. So it was really elated. Whoever won that game would have been happy for because both those coaches deserved a championship. Speaking of college basketball, Chris, uh, you cover college basketball. I recently watched one of your videos, the opposition, oppositional research for the University of Kentucky basketball. Um, can you explain what, more about that? Well, uh, my mentor in this business is the uh, voice of the University of Kentucky, Tom Leach, and uh, had a, a great working relationship with Tom for a number of years. And um, all of the media that follow uh, University of Kentucky athletics, especially men's basketball, it's, it's huge. I mean, it's a plethora of media. I can't relate to any other uh, college environment that would have that. And they all focus on Kentucky, which is rightfully so, a tremendous program. And we were talking one day like, well, gosh, who's focusing on the opposition. And uh, that's kind of how that idea spawned. We wanted to have an in-depth, deep dive, if you will, about the opposition. So it's kind of taken a mind of its own. There's a sponsorship uh, applied to it, but it's, uh, it's a pretty hefty project. It's paled down to about three to four minutes about that opposition, whomever the team is playing. And it's got, you know, the coach's bio and the starting lineups and historical data and just try to make it uh, interesting for the folks that, um, you know, care to that level. Yeah, I found it very interesting. I really like that time frame. It's, you know, it's it's not too long. It's not too short. It's like a nice, happy medium. And one player that caught my eye, though, and, you know, we're, I, I like I like talking college basketball. I like talking basketball and sports in general. But Cameron Thomas for LSU, you're highlighting him. Uh, you, you mentioned that something that was very interesting, how he's the all-time leading scorer in Oak Hill basketball, high school basketball. Uh, that, that, that program, I just think of Carmelo Anthony coming out of that program. I believe Rajon Rondo came out of that program. Um, so it's, it's just, I love learning more about college basketball and, and, and those cool stats like that. Well, I've got a great team around me. Steve Bird is a guy with Glycott. You mentioned Glycott. He's our producer and he kind of, he sends a lot of that info, but that stuff like that, that's a great example that you made that for the fans that care to that depth that, and it's always good to, to share that information unquestionably. Uh, one of your other mentors, um, in addition to, sorry, was it Tom Leach? Tom Leach, yes. Tom Leach. So one of your other mentors, Brian Seaman, who does some work 
with uh, the LA Clippers, uh, the broadcasting for the NBA team. Uh, he once gave you advice. He told you to variate your, your vocabulary. And myself, as a, uh, an aspiring broadcaster on, the, on kind of like a side thing of my career uh, right now, in contrast to the Pirates, but can you explain what variate your vocabulary means? That's the number one um, point that I've ever been given, the most important, bar none, are relationships. You've got to have relationships, so that would be 1A. But changing how you say it, play by play, it's uh, redundant over and over. It's time and score and the basics, but description. And you can say pass 59 times, but you have to do it 59 different ways. So um, he shared that with me uh, via email. I'd sent him some clips back in the day and he had shared that. And then one thing led to another and that's, we kind of got to that point. But uh, for my prep, I spend more time on words uh, than I do on the matchup, quite honestly. Uh, basketball is a much more simplistic call, I think. Um, so I, I'll have index cards uh, basically with synonyms for all of the, the important terms. So for football kick, and I'll have an index card of 20 synonyms in front of me and then pass and I'll do the same thing. And then, um, you know, football, I just, it's third and seven from the 23 and, um, or, you know, the kick is uh, sailing left or, or whatever the, the case may be, but just describing that in a different way. Um, repeating the same word drives me crazy, keeps me up at night. Don't like that. That's very, that's very interesting. Uh, that's, not, that's something, something new I learned today. So, uh, Chris, uh, you, your involvement in college basketball and basketball, um, I, I saw through some research that you've interviewed some very notable personalities. Uh, Jay Billis, we all know him, covers college basketball. Dick Vitale also covers sure. college basketball. I'm going to go for it. Uh, he oh. says, ba baby, baby. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to get it like him, but I see him on that new commercial. He's still doing it at his age, but uh, perhaps one of the uh, more notable interviews I saw was long uh, legendary NBA sideline reporter, Craig Sager um, of those three, or maybe just talk about those three people um, you, you got to meet uh, and interview. Well, they're all uh, through my relationship with the university of Kentucky. So we talked about the huge media conglomerate that followed the cats um, I would always or generally try to interview the opposing teams we discussed in some depth or the TV announcers or radio announcers after the game to try to give a different spin on the game instead of just, you know, being, quote, a cattle call following the UK angle. So um, interviewed Billis many, many times, um, you know, 60, 90 seconds, not much depth, but just such a kind guy, always willing to give you the time and just be very simple. Those guys, I try to place myself in those shoes. And I'm, I'm sure you know this too. You know, they've spent all week preparing for a game. They've traveled to the game. They, they want to get home. They've been to the game an hour and a half early. It's two and a half hours in the game and they, they want to leave there. So I try to be very respectful of their time. One, two questions, 90 seconds, 60 seconds and out. Just a very, you know, an overview of their perception of the game. Might ask them a specific about a strategy or something like that. And then the same would apply to Dick Vitale. Everybody wants his time, as I'm sure you can imagine. Everybody wants his time. The fans, they go bonkers. They want pictures of him, although he might be there four games a season. They always want pictures and autographs. He's, uh, he's just a wonderful soul. He was actually uh, re up for ESPN, I believe, another couple of years recently. I think I saw that. Just uh, two great guys, but it's not just them. It's all, it's Jim Spinarkle. It's Ian Eagle. It's all the guys that, that we all know via the TV that, that have called games at that level. They're all very respectful because they, they were uh, where we are now. I mean, so they get it. Yeah, uh, Dick Vitale and, and Jay Billis, I think uh, specifically, the great thing about YouTube is that you can go back in the archives and watch some some things that happened about 20 years ago. And one thing that I recently went back and watched was the LeBron James uh, high school, one of his high school games, which ESPN covered. And Dick Vitale and Jay Billis were there and Dan Shulman, another uh, broadcaster, was there. And um, it was just really cool to go back and, you know, a blast from the past about 20 years ago, seeing Dick Vitale. Uh, he's still doing it. So that's great to hear that he's been re up with ESPN. Um, Chris Labar joining me on Pirates Weekly. Uh, Chris, uh, from all the talk with your your um, that we've been talking about the Kentucky, the state of Kentucky, it seems like I'm, I'm going to take a stab at it. It seems like you're from the Kentucky neck of the woods. Is that true? Yes, yeah, so I live in Lexington, grew up in Louisville, but yes, yeah. 
So growing up, uh, you know, did you have any favorite teams, any favorite players that kind of hooked you into the sports world? Wow. Um, yeah, Cincinnati Reds. Uh, that's the state there just right above. Sorry to just messing with you, but it's right above Kentucky, Ohio. It's just right there. But yeah, it's, it's an hour away. So I grew up a huge Reds fan. And Marty Brenneman, I don't know if you know that name, but just, oh, wow. One of the best radio announcers. Ever. Oh, he's incredible. He recently retired. But as a kid, that's who I would listen to. And uh, yeah, huge, huge Reds fan back in the day. The NBA has never uh, had a presence in the area. Uh, the ABA back many years ago with the Colonels, uh, there were huge, huge presence. And there's been, you know, discussion in Louisville about trying to get a franchise, an expansion franchise. I don't know if that's going to materialize, but uh, this area is just uh, a focal point on college athletics. And the extreme uh, is, again, I think they're going to feast off, feast off of that. And then generally in, in Kentucky, once college basketball ends, uh, you've got the Derby coming up. But then after that, you really – you've got a, a summer of not a lot of stuff, quite honestly. And then, you know, college football is going to start Labor Day. So uh, the timing of this IFL, I think, is extraordinary and uh, wonderful by the commission, whomever concocted the timeline. It's wonderful. But the extreme, this fits into what they want to do to, to their blueprint perfectly. Yeah, it really sounds like it. I mean, just uh, Worcester, where the Pirates play in Massachusetts, they just had the Red Sox AAA affiliate uh, re, uh, re, uh, locate to Worcester. So um, they're going to be right next to us, uh, you know, in the summer. So that's great to hear that the extreme are kind of taking over, um, you know, the eyes of the sports fans during the summer months. Chris Labar, play-by-play uh, -play broadcaster for the Louisville Extreme, joining me on Pirates Weekly. Uh, Chris, you mentioned how, you know, the Kentucky Derby for Pirates, uh, the players and personnel who will be traveling to Louisville to be on the lookout for that. Um, do you have any uh, sports broadcasting event that you haven't called that you would, that you would love to per, uh, perhaps the Kentucky Derby or something else? Oh, sure. There's a million that we haven't, uh, both of us. But yeah, I mean, that, the Kentucky Derby is May the 1st, so it'll be a week after the Pirates uh, and Extreme play. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, final, final four NCAA tournament, men's basketball tournament, things, things of that nature. I think any broadcaster, even at the highest level, the CBS guys, they, they still have things that they'd like to check off. Yeah, for certain. And Chris, we've been talking so much sports um, during this interview, but uh, one thing that I saw on your resume that really stands out is that you took a break from sports. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you, you veered right and you, and you decided to go into the dental sales field. Um, maybe talk about what made you do that and what made you come back to sports. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Um, always wanted to do broadcasting forever, really. And then when I was in college at Bellarmine University, which, uh, by the way, they just now gone to Division One, and this was their first year. They almost won the Atlantic Sun Tournament. So in their first wow. year. Yeah. So but anyway, so uh, did their games as a student play by play. They were a division two program at that point. And they were not very good, but I still got the call. And that's all that mattered. Right. So did the games, yeah. loved it. Uh, but as we both know, broadcasting doesn't pay a lot of bills. So uh, I was in my mid 20s at that point and just a different phase of my life. And uh, my best friend's dad or one of my best friend's dads is a dentist. And we were talking about opportunities. He said, well, why don't you look into uh, selling supplies to dentists? So sure enough. Um, eight years worth and formed wonderful relationships with dentists and staff. That was a, that was a great period of my life, but uh, always uh, had the bug to do broadcasting and um, just decided at some point we're going to we're going to go back and pursue our dream. We're going to do this. And I, uh, the good Lord made it happen. And uh, it's all whom, whom you meet timing and all that. And Tom Leach was a huge part of that the University of Kentucky. I reached out to him and he's been instrumental and uh, just the one day at a time and busting it and uh, very thankful, but it's, uh, but the, the dental uh, sales piece was huge because with broadcasting, you know, sponsorships and such, you have to sell. It's, there is no one today that can just call games. It's you have, there are so many other pieces to that puzzle. So sales is something that I really, really worked hard at. And even though I sold, you know, Dixie cups and spit sinks, I'm still selling <laughs> So now I'm selling advertising and relationships and things of that nature. Um, so they've all, it's all kind of intertwined, but yet been connected. And how did your career in sales help you uh, like in, like what's one thing that you took away that helped you return in your return to broadcasting? Uh, well, connecting with people, 
Um, broadcasting who, who you know is really important and cultivating relationships is, oh gosh, that's so, so important. So in, in uh, you know, in dental sales, you would, you would obviously have to, you know, cultivate relationships with the, with the physician. That's, that's your client. So they have to learn uh, about your product. They have to trust you and all things like that. And I think the same applies to broadcasting. Uh, the bosses that, you know, we're reaching out to folks. We want better opportunities, great opportunities, and that takes time and we have to earn their trust. And uh, all those, all those things are all, all connected. All right, Chris, last question for you, and then I'll let you go. Um, you know, myself, uh, I'm a year removed uh, a college graduate. Some of the other college graduates who are aspiring to be broadcasters, what's one piece of advice that you would give them uh, as they enter the sports world and want to be a broadcaster? Be able to do something else. You've got to be able to be diversified. Um, there's so many things that uh, go into a, a broadcast, so many but you have to be able to do many, many different things. I agree. I agree with you. I think uh, being able to do uh, multiple facets and help out mul multiple ways uh, in your job or career is, is extremely important. So I, I like that. I like the answer, Chris Labar. I like that you came on to Pirates Weekly. Thank you so much, uh, Chris. We will see you uh, very soon as the Pirates head out to Louisville uh, for the first of two times they'll head out to Louisville this season. Uh, first game Saturday, April 24th uh, at around seven o'clock kickoff. Chris, I'll let you go. Have a nice rest of your day. Thank you guys very much. Good to see you, Oliver. Thanks.